have we have a little joke in house that says just as soon as the conservancy agrees to support a project um it goes down the tubes <laughs> and uh, that's not by any direction or design uh but there is some internal logic to that because what happens when we engage with the project proponents uh, very frequently, uh, it becomes clear that there may be other alternatives that are even better from the project proponents' um, standpoint. And so uh, you can take a look at the Amundsen Ranch, you can take a look at Soka, you can take a look at Corral Canyon, you can take a look at the, at the uh, various Bob Hope properties um, and, and even Triangle Ranch. A triangle Ranch is a probably an extremely good and relevant example. And we were able to uh, ultimately pull that down, even though it was totally approved by Los Angeles County. So our interaction, uh, sometimes it gets people pretty upset. What's the Conservancy doing, negotiating or talking to these people? And, but in the end, uh, we believe that the that approach has served the public interest. And so uh, you all remember, and most of you remember, you were all on the board at the time, uh, the incredible controversy. It took uh, us two meetings. We, uh, there was a motion to reverse our position and um, whether or not we would even countenance any development in at that point, it was Sweetwater Mesa that was that was most in controversy. That was the the edge proposal, uh, albeit for only what five or six homes up there on the mesa, but in an incredibly sensitive uh, area. And uh, that went back and forth. I think it was in front of the Coastal Commission, what Elena, twice, three times, at least twice. Yeah. So. And, and ultimately, it was approved by the Coastal Commission. And uh, the court overturned it on the grounds that it had not yet been thoroughly approved by the County of Los Angeles. And then the politics of county changed, the county supervisor changed, and uh, now uh, they, uh, even before the county supervisor changed, uh, we began to have discussions uh, with the with the property owner there. And those discussions uh, became more serious uh, during the over the summer, and it became clear that um, that we had some opportunities, and so we went ahead with the appraisal process, a uh, very difficult uh, appraisal process. Uh, I don't agree with all the things that were uh, done by our own appraiser, uh, but that's a different and ar a much arcane uh, discussion. What we have now uh, in front of you, and this, this is not uh, a final uh, deal point, those final deal points will actually be done not by the Conservancy because the Conservancy is not going to be the acquisition agency. It's going to be by the MRCA. Uh, but we know the parameters of what you will impose on the MRCA, and those are the conditions of acquiring the backbone, uh, not backbone, but the, excuse me, the coastal slope trail portion of this property. Uh, I think everyone agrees that we have to complete the coastal slope trail, period, end of sentence. And one of the critical missing links is between Solstice Canyon Park and Escobedo Canyon. And the property that we're looking at here, and I'm going to Put it over here now to Elena to describe what that property is that we're looking at and what is in contention uh, this evening. Thank you, Joe. Madam Chair. So what we're looking at here um, is the, the uh, portion of the property um, that is the most Western. Um, we sometimes call that the uh, uh, the Primrose property, um, but as our chair, Madam Chair, read all these parcel numbers here, um, uh, and Mario showing the 
point um, on the indicator, the pointer there, that is where we're talking about. You can see um, the road in the foreground um, is Latigo Canyon Road, um, the MRCA and um, the Conservancy own the properties to the west of that, right around there. That's the connector from Latigo Canyon Road directly into Escondido Canyon Park. And then following, as we showed you a little bit earlier in another item, into Ramirez Canyon. That's the coastal slope trail alignment as it goes from Ramirez Canyon and the campground that is there through Escondido Canyon Park to Latigo Canyon Road. And now we're talking about the extension where the indicator is, where the pointer is, into Sol Solstice Canyon through these parcels. And you can see the um, existing road that is the um, alignment, the natural alignment for the coastal slope trail. So the trail would exist upon acquisition of these parcels. You can also see the incredible blue water views. They're stunning. Um, and I, I just want to note for the record that um, we were unable to access um, the actual parcels. We don't have permission yet from the landowner. So all of these photos are being taken from other land that is publicly owned, whether that is from um, the National Park Service lands or MRCA lands or Conservancy lands. And I think that's a really important point here because um, were we to access it, we would have um, a very different uh, vantage point to show and share with you tonight. But these are what you see from um, other public land. So the acreage is 151 acres. And the amount is $10 million, which includes the acquisition cost and the associated ancillary costs, including appraisals, et cetera. And this is, we hope, the beginning of a staged acquisition program. But if we cannot agree in the future to a staged acquisition program uh, in all of the parties that have to agree, that is the appraisers, Department of General Services, other funding agencies at all. In the end, we would end up with the completion, at least on this segment, of the Coastal Slope Trail connection into the National Park Service property in Solstice Canyon. And that that is worth uh, every penny of the money we propose. And again, we hope it will be the beginning of uh, a sequence of acquisitions uh, and I, I personally believe, of course, that's going to happen. Uh, and it's, we have a good track record here, but I'm asking you this evening to make a decision based on the merits of acquiring those two properties, uh, of 151 acres, uh, Archer, the so-called Archer and what is it? Ruby, Rubio or. Rubens. Rubens. Ruben, thank you. So, uh, again, I want to thank uh, all the work that Jeff has put into it, the work that Elena has put into it, and uh, the support that we've received from uh, all the various uh, entities. Um, I'd like to be able to say we can wrap the whole thing up. Can't do it now, but let's do it what we can do within our own resources and uh, completion of the entire acquisition will need to have support from at the very minimum the wildlife conservation board and the um, uh, and the state coastal conservancy as well as uh, you know we'll take our tin cup around to pretty much uh, everybody so. yeah Thank you. So, Madam Chair, that, uh, that's a, as concise a summary as I can give of the project. Thank you. Um, I can see we have some questions and comments. Let's start with Wendy Sue Rosen. Joe, I just want to clarify. So this is for the archery 25.92 acres and the Rubens 125 acres. But what's listed here are all the others, Sweet, Sweetwater Mesa 152, 
and primrose. And so I hear what you're saying that we hope this will be the beginning of moving us into the acquisition. If not, we have this amazing sort of, you know, um, connectivity to solstice. And if, if so, we, f we finalize a lot of the acquisition we we'd like to, and we need the support of all the, these other funding agents. The appraisals that you're talking about though, that you have done, they're just for this 10 million or have there been appraisals done on these other parcels? We have willing sellers. Can you just talk a little bit about where we are in the process and the timeline for hopefully acquiring these other parcels? So I'm specifically not going to be discussing the appraisals because those are highly technical and that information is under the um, Public Records Act. No, just, just wondering if there are any have been done, not what they are or how much. So yes, so multiple appraisals. Jeff, what are we on? Three appraisals now so far? Um, <clears throat> there, are, there have been multiple appraisals. We have the, the appraisals for the Archery, Rubens, and Primrose properties are complete and reviewed. And the appraisal for the Sweetwater site is, is uh, almost complete. But we do not have agreement on the um, Primrose and Sweetwater properties from the landowner. I, I don't want to represent that we do, but we we believe that we move forward on the Rubens and Archer, then uh, that makes it all the more likely, ultimately, uh, total success. Questions or comments? Uh, this is Lloyd Ahern. I've got an observation and a question. Joe, you know, the... You know, the nature of the Malibu psyche is that we never let anything get developed. You, you try and you try and it never gets developed. So why do you need, and I'm curious here, why do you need to get the $10 million now on something that's not going to be developed ever? You're going to be able to buy it. That's the reason. The reason you got so much land in Malibu is because we saved it for you to buy because we didn't let anything get built. It's impossible to get anything built in Malibu, as you know. So um, why, and this is, and I don't mean this in a hostile way, I mean it in a, I'm curious. Why do you need the $10 million now when you know that nobody's ever going to build anything on that? That's going to be yours when you want. In fact, probably better later because the price will go down because they know they can't build on it. Well, um, we paid a lot of money to appraisers who are, you know, I won't say that they're weasoned folks, um, but they do look askance. And these appraisers have given these values based on the ability to, to put some development there. Uh, you know, it's, it's very hard to say that on a fairly large piece of property, there's no development potential at all. And uh, uh, so when the appraisers say that there is that value and remember the coastal commission coastal commission approved the project remember that oh that was up in uh up in the uh, above sarah retreat right 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 not yeah. not in that piece of property that, you're talking about the one that's next to latigo right we're talking about the one that's next to latigo yeah. But I'm saying in, in terms of if you want to make a prognostication, the, the, the most controversial was the project there, the so-called Sweetwater. Right. And, and that's the one that the Coastal Commission itself ultimately approved. Right. So reasoning back to the less controversial, uh, the appraiser made a, a judgment that it was uh, it was worth that amount of money. So I'm not going to debate that. Uh, uh, it's not my place to debate it. Uh, I'm just saying that this is what the um, uh, appraisers came up with. And I, I just don't think that any government agency in California today 
is going to say, we're never going to approve anything because we're just never going to approve anything in Malibu. I just don't think your Malibu city attorney is going to say that. No, I know they're not going to say it. I just know the citizens are going to say that. And we elect our, our council people. So anyway, I'll let you go, Joe. I know this is a long night. Thank you. I see Sean has his hand up. Yeah, I'll just say it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, one, I don't, know, I don't know about 180, but but it's it's a marked uh, path that we've traveled from that edge, long edge meeting debate that went much later than this meeting um, to where we are now. And I think that that's a testament to the great work of, of our agency and all of our colleagues and all the work people have put into it. I would also say that uh, why should we acquire this land so we can, you know, work on the trail so we can protect stuff. And I think we've seen, we started the meeting tonight with an example of property that we're supposed or, or parcels that we're supposed to control and that are supposed to be treated a certain way and there's encroachment we've seen with the edge that that there was uh when you have a lot of juice uh you can make stuff um happen and so i think there's still reason for us to acquire these parcels there's still reason for us to protect these areas and put them into public holdings so that we can um, have that option in the future as opposed to have that sort of cut out from underneath us so so i'm in support of of this effort. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So I have a comment to make because I live right outside of Triangle Ranch and Joe brought that one up. And I have to tell you honestly that we had to, that was all done in phases. And phase four was the one that we really wanted to make sure was going to be preserved as open space. But we had to go through phase one and get that. It was a smaller parcel, phase two, phase three. And finally, as amazing as it is, uh, the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy pulled off phase four. And so now the whole area is preserved. So I'm, I'm a big supporter of taking the small steps when you have the opportunity to take them. And um, I think that this connectivity, trail connectivity, even it's, it's kind of a win-win in my view, even if you just get the two um, parcels that are there now, the 150 acres, you, you, that's better than nothing. And I think that we probably will be successful as time goes on. So I support this purchase and I actually think it's, it's, it's really promising. I mean, it's on the coast of Southern California. It's going to be open space. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Anybody else? Uh, this, is, this is Rafi. Uh, you said that you lived there. Uh, I just want to bring up the issue of conflict of interest. If anyone is within 500 feet of the property, you know. Oh, I wish I was with 500 feet. <laughs> okay. Okay, Dad, I just want to be careful so that the vote is not. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you no, I, I live in Agora Hills, which is adjacent to Triangle Ranch. Okay. But thank you for bringing up that point. But <laughs> I wouldn't mind living within 500 feet and then recusing myself. But thank you. So um, if we, it, it looks like Ed Corridori has a question or a comment. Uh, yeah, my only comment is that it's, uh, I, I don't think it's very likely that the value of the property is going to go down. Right. Thank you for that. Brian Dennert. I see, I see the advantage for uh, increased recreation for Southern California, and this is the time to do it. I, I'm also uh, surprised that somebody would say that uh, Malibu will not allow housing when we're in a housing shortage and the, under no condition would they do that. So if this property is not preserved as open space, then of course development should be allowed. Uh, we can't say that only one community is not allowed to build housing and everybody else has to. I can't imagine the voters of every other community are gonna like that argument. So uh, yes, I, I think we should preserve it and make it open space for everybody to be able to hike and bike on. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, then I would ask James to take the roll call vote. Ms. Acker? Yes. Mr. Ahern? Abstained. Mr. Cacciotti? Yes. Mr. Corridori? Yes. Mr. Dennert? Yes. Ms. Dransfeld? Yes. Ms. James? Yes. Mr. Kishbaugh? Yes. 
Mr. Kraut? Yes. Mr. Lang? Yes. Mr. Manukian? I, I do, I mean, yes. Ms. Mykos? Uh, I'm sorry, Rosanna, I didn't catch that. Can you unmute? Yeah, I. I Thank you. Ms. Nelson? Yes. Mr. Manukian? Oh, I got you already, sorry. Mr. Yeah. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Rosen? An enthusiastic yes. Mr. Wendler? Yes. Mr. Yekparian? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Buckley Weber? Yes. That carries. With one abstention. Services board members 10Q consideration of resolution authorizing the grants to the Mounts Recreation Conservancy Conservation Authority for the acquisition of Primrose 125.363 acres, Archery 25.92 acres, Rubens 125 acres, and Sweetwater Mesa 152 acres properties. And then along APN numbers that I will have to read, APNs. I, I don't think you need to read no. them. All right, great. As, no, no, and, 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 and just, the, the current proposal is the so-called Archery and Rubens properties, a total of 151 acres and 10 great. minutes. So do we have a motion on the item? So moved. Do we need a second. second? Yeah, a second. Any questions or comments or discussion on the item? I have several questions. Sure, go right in. Uh, so I noticed in the in the document, right, we're trying to close, or it says completion date, December 29th, 2023. I'm assuming that is the urgency of getting this funding. Would that be a fair assessment, Joe? Yes. Okay. Um, but we don't know the total project cost and you're not discussing fair market value or you're not discussing appraisals, but for all of the conservancy boards, et cetera, acquisitions folks they sit on, right? We, the state, generally do not acquire property or contribute to acquiring property above fair market value, correct? Correct. So, so how- So, the, the, you know, so makes it clear, your action now has to do with 151 acres of the so-called Archery and Rubin properties. So those stand alone. Those stand alone. And there's no dispute as to the fair market value of those, and that's been certified by all the appraisers, et cetera. There's no question about that. And so we are we are segmenting, if you will, but for good reason, going ahead with those things that we can now and resolving primarily with the landowner, resolving those other questions, and we may be able to resolve them and maybe not. If we can't resolve them, we'll have a damn good piece of property. If we can resolve them, we'll have an <laughs> even better uh, acquisition. But because of the perceived tax uh, issues, from the landowner, um, whatever they want to do, they want to do with respect to this immediate property, they want to do by the end of the of this calendar year. And I think we have to, since we do have the funds available and it meets all of our criteria and the appraisal is solid with respect to that property, um, there's no reason not, not to go ahead uh, even though we haven't solved all the other uh, all the other problems, I, I'm not. They're not even problems. We haven't even we haven't solved all the other questions. And to to require that we we do the entire acquisition, which will be a very significant amount. Um, now we miss opportunities that we shouldn't miss. So, Joe, I just, I mean, all you have to do is look at the colorful chart 
on our board package of all of the amazing, you know, vegetation and species, you know, that the, these properties, uh, you know, all the different colors, right, that they protect. And you see the alignment of the trail. I, I you know, and we're talking about these two properties. My, the challenge I have is when I read the agenda and the application, it's for this, right? And I have no problem with phasing things, right? I supported, you know, Triangle Ranch phasing that we talked about previously. A lot of times that's how it's done. But, and you're, you're telling me that, that we have appraisals for the two properties. So, so really what we're voting on is 10 million for the two properties, not the full thing that, that, that is actually written up in the agenda. That's where I, that's where I find the confusion. Right. So, so we, we wrote the agenda hoping yeah. that we could get greater agreement from the landowner than we currently have. Got it. Okay. And so uh, we were on the phone, uh, not we, but uh, Jeff was on the phone. And these are transatlantic calls to Ireland. And uh, I mean, you, you, you have no idea. Uh, so rather than wait until everything could be resolved, because I'm not sure we can resolve it in the time frame, and uh, and, and I'm, I, I would, I wanted to be able to go into closed session on this. And the lawyers said that we can't go into closed session because it's not the conservancy that is making the deal. It's the MRCA and the da, 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 and da, da, da. So I would love to be able to really get into the details of this. And in fact, disembowel this whole project and have you exp look at all the entrails. I'd love that you should have our problems. But the lawyers say, no, 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 you can't do that. So I think I've won about as far in explaining why we can't go further. And again, uh, as I've told, I, I, I told the edge of this directly, uh, you've got some really damn beautiful, gorgeous properties. Uh, let us buy what we can buy now. Let us buy what we can buy now. And we'll agree to fight over the remainder later on. And he said, yes. And I think we ought to take him up on it. And we won't be via, we won't, we'll be consistent with our previous practices on the fair market value. That's what I'm hearing. We're not gonna do anything that exceeds fair market value. Beautiful. Standard. I'm done with my questions. Thank you. David, you Indeed. Mr. Chair. <laughs> David, sure. No, I was just uh, you know a, a number uh, a number of agencies when there are fires have to look at lost visitor use and the value of this. And I think that the question was why do it now? And um, you know the public value uh, over three years of thousands of visitors is you know uh, exceeds what we have on the table. Meaning if we were to lose it due to fire, we could, uh, whoever caused that fire could be charged for that lost visitor use. I, I'm just saying that there was some discussion about why buy it now versus buy it later, but we get the benefit, the the public gets the individual, all the individuals get that benefit um, over the intervening time, the sooner that we do it. Um, this is great, Joe. I think it, um, th this is fantastic. I mean, I think there's a, um, and, and for the board, I think there's, um, there are a number of issues with access to all of our coastal parks, regardless who they're owned by. And I think the Coastal Slope Trail gives us a lot of options in terms of planning public access that we don't have with this fragmented, with, with these fragmented holdings. And so from an operational perspective, I think that there's some efficiencies um, that, that go with um, with completing this trail and, and, and identifying areas uh, that can accommodate the public access. Uh, that's it. For me, as far as fair market value, I thought you would probably do. We have to do that. I, I imagine that the conservancy would be held to that in the RCA. Well, uh, anyone else with any other questions or to add to the discussion? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and pull the question and uh, James, can you do roll call? Mr. Samansky? Yes. Mr. Luna? Yes. Ms. Pavley? Yes. 
Ms. Martin? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Mr. Fink? Yes. Mr. Ortega? Yes. That carries. Well, congratulations, folks. We went through all that. So it's really great. Thank you so much. At, at 10 28 p.m. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Great. Go We're Conservancy. Yep. Yeah. So now uh, down to the next. It's earlier than a lot of other Malibu related meetings. <laughs> <laughs>